Well, good afternoon. This here is Pastor Cole at Eastern Baptist Church. Getting ready to do our ABCs of Christian Growth, and it's going to be on assurance, the letter A in your book, and it's part number four. How may I know I am saved? Uh, that's a question that we ask ourselves and that God wants you to know. And we can know that we're saved, and uh, uh, God tells us through his word. And so he uh, lets us know that. He says, I am saved. I know I am saved because I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the answer. Uh, it's not about me being, I know I'm saved because I got baptized. I know I'm saved because I'm a, I'm, I'm a member of a church. I know I'm saved because I'm a good person. I know I'm saved because I give money to the church. I know I'm saved because I, I do good things, do good works and things like that. Uh, that has nothing to do with your salvation whatsoever. Good works are done because you are saved, not to get saved, big difference. And so I know I'm saved because I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ in Acts 16, 31. It says, and they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. I believe he's talking about the Philippian jailer here. Uh, Paul was beaten in Silas and thrown into prison and uh, they sang praise unto God and prayed and then uh, the, the, the place was shaken. The, the doors were all open, the, all the keepers came off of them and everything and the guy's gonna jump in there and kill himself and Paul said do thyself no harm for we're all here and uh, he jumps in the guy the uh, warden of the prison uh, comes in there and says what must I do to be saved he said and he said they said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house it always requires the individual to make a personal commitment a personal decision for the Lord Jesus Christ and you have to be of age to be able to do that a baby cannot do that uh, each individual has to make that decision for themselves. Moms and dads can't do that for them. That's why it's so important that we teach our children about the Lord Jesus Christ and their need for salvation. Uh, talk to them about that early in life so they know later on when they make a decision for Christ that they are saved. And in John chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, it says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God wants you to know uh, you put your faith and trust in his son, you have everlasting life. That's not temporary life. It's not something that's going to, God's going to take it back when you sin. Uh, when Jesus Christ died for your own Calvary, always remember he died for your past, present, and future sin. You're always saved now and forever. The thing that our sin affects is our fellowship. It never affects our eternal security. Uh, and so in John chapter 5, verse 25, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and that they uh, that hear shall live. And I probably got the wrong verse on that because I wanted verse number 24. Let me get my Bible out here and I'll get that out for you. Uh, sometimes my fingers hit the wrong numbers here. It's John chapter number 5 and verse number 24 uh, is the verse that I really want to hear. Really, really, I say unto, un, say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. And so God tells you, you put your faith and trust in him, you uh, you have eternal life, you have eternal security. And then also in John chapter 11, verse 25 to 26, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. He's saying this to Martha and stuff at uh, Lazarus' death. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth uh, in me shall never die. Believest thou this? He asked the question, do you believe this? You know, and, and uh, you put your faith and trust in Christ and you believe what he says here. God says he gives you eternal life. And so I know I'm saved because I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two here is I know that I am saved because I hath the Son. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 12, He that hath the, Son of, hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. So if you have the Son, if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, the Bible says you have the life, which is the eternal life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life, does not have eternal life, so he's telling you. So eternal life is always through Jesus Christ, always comes through the Son. It never comes through any other way. If it came through some other way, then Christ dying on Calvary would be in vain, and it's not. Uh, Jesus paid the ultimate price for yours and my sin. He gave his life on Calvary and also was judged by his Father. 
Uh, he, because the Bible says he became sin for us that knew no sin, that we might become the righteous of God in him. And the Bible talks about it being uh, dark from the uh, from 12 to 3 o'clock, from the 6th to the ninth hour over all the earth. And uh, we were not privileged to see what God did to his son, but God judged him. He judges sin. And so I thank God that Jesus Christ took our sin, the penalty for our sin, and paid the price of our sin on Calvary that you and I could have eternal life putting our faith and trust in him. I know that I am saved because I have love for the brethren. Number three is brethren. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, the Bible says, We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death, and whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And we know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. You see, if you hate your brother, you're probably not saved. You know, I know we get angry with one another and put out with one another and and, and, and uh, ticked off. You ever been ticked off? I know I've been ticked off, amen. I got a brother and he irritates me sometimes when I was younger and stuff like that. But, you know, uh, I don't hate him. And uh, the Bible talks about uh, uh, people we shouldn't be hating, folks, amen. We may not like what they do, uh, but uh, it doesn't mean that we need to hate them. And the Bible tells us in John chapter 3, or John chapter 13, verse 35, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have a loved one for another. Uh, people are going to know whether you're belonging to Jesus or not by your love uh, for each other. And in 1 John 2, 9, it says, He that, uh, that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. And in 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, it says, If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he say he loves, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And so uh, the Bible tells us that uh, we know that we're saved because I have love for the brethren. And, uh, you know, uh, you ought to try some forgiveness maybe if you're mad at somebody and things ain't going right. What about forgiving them and uh, going off of there? Forgiveness is for you. It's not for them anyway. It's that you can maintain a relationship, proper relationship with God. And then we also have, I know that I'm saved uh, because I desire to keep God's commandments. Desire to keep God's commandments. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 3, it says, And hereby we know, hereby, do, um, excuse me, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Uh, and the Bible tells us we are his friends if we keep his commandments. Amen. And in John chapter 14, verse 12, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I shall do, he uh, do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And in verse number 23, it says that Jesus answered and said to him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and he will come unto him, and make our abode with him. And so uh, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, people will know something. If you want to keep God's commandments here, he says, I know I'm saved. I have a desire to keep God's commandments. We try to live God's word. Uh, born again believers are going to try to please God through their faith and honoring God's word and trying to change their life so it uh, gets them closer to the Lord Jesus Christ and not make excuses for our sin, uh, but to acknowledge and admit and say the same thing about our sin that God does so that uh, folks know that we are saved and uh, we do make mistakes. People have a lot more respect for a person who admits when they do something wrong, asks for forgiveness for it, than somebody who makes a bunch of excuses and lies about it. Uh, you can, uh, people put up with a lot of things from people who are honest than those who are dishonest. I know I am saved because I desire to turn from the world and all of its sin. Uh, there's a lot of sin in the world, amen, that's out there. And uh, we're no, uh, we get caught in that, and sometimes uh, we don't lose maybe the, the war. We lose some battles along the way because of sin, and Satan is very crafty, and we just we get sucked in before we know it, and then the next thing you know, we're in sin. That's not where we want to be, but it does happen, and God does forgive us. You just tell God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me, and if you've wronged somebody, go ask them for forgiveness. Uh, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 16, the Bible says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Uh, stop and think about, you know, Adam and Eve. Eve was uh, 
fell into that with Satan, uh, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. She seen the fruit was good for, for food. She desired it and took of it and ate of it there, thereof and fell into sin uh, and gave unto her husband and uh, he sinned. Uh, Adam did it willfully. He knew that he shouldn't be uh, eaten of that tree and he did it anyway and uh, plummeted a whole human race into sin. And, uh, you know, if we were there, we'd have done the same thing Adam did. And so you don't say that you're better than him. You'd have never done that. Uh, I'm sure that Adam didn't understand how far reaching the sin would be and how it would affect every human being upon the face of this earth. And I'm sure today, him in heaven, uh, that it grieves his heart uh, what he did to God's creation. And here he had lost his son when Cain rose up and slew Abel. And uh, he knew it death. He knew the pain of death and, and stuff like that. Uh, firsthand of what his son did to, to his other son and uh, I can't even imagine how that must have really just tore his heart out uh, but we would be no different uh, as than what Adam was in Colossians chapter 3 verse 2 set your affection on things above not on things on the earth if I'm he said I know I'm saved because I desire to turn from the world and all of its sin so our affections ought to be on things above all things in heaven things about God about the Lord Jesus Christ about the Holy Spirit rather than things on this earth. You know, we're just sojourners. The word sojourner means that we're passing through. We don't take a permanent residence here, uh, even though we live here. Uh, we ought to be able to, if God called us to move somewhere else, we ought to be willing to sell everything we have and move. Uh, we're a sojourner passing through. So we're setting our things on the affections and things above, not on things in the earth. And Titus chapter 2, verse 12 says, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. It's uh, We should be able to do that. God commands us to do that. If God commands us to do something, uh, God has given us the ability to be able to do that. When he tells us, uh, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. God makes it possible for us to do it because Jesus Christ died for us on Calvary, and we have a choice now uh, to whether to sin or not to sin. We choose to sin. Uh, uh, when you were unsaved, you knew nothing but to sin because that's what the flesh does. But once you got saved, you had a choice that you could make. We didn't have to be ungodly. We didn't have to be worldly, lustful, and all that kind of stuff. But we've chosen to do that. We can live soberly. We can live righteously. We can live godly. Doing things godly means doing things God's way in this present world. We have the ability to do that through our Heavenly Father, through His Son, and the Holy Spirit. I know that I'm saved because I am overcoming the world. In 1 John 5, 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We have a faith. We don't have a religion. Uh, our religion religion is, is vain. It's empty. It means nothing. We have a faith that's alive because it's founded upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we don't have a bunch of uh, religion where we got a bunch of creeds and things that we try to keep and all that kind of stuff. That's all works and is of the flesh and it's, uh, doctrines of men. But when we have a live faith, it's about the doctrine of the word of God and us trying to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's good to see that Sister Larissa's in with us today. Amen. And uh, also, I know I am saved because I have the witness of the Spirit within. In 1 John chapter 5, verse number 10, He that believeth on the Son of God hath this witness himself. Uh, he that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believeth not the, the record that God gave of his Son. And also in Romans chapter 8, verse 16, the Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. You see, the God's Holy Spirit will bear witness with our spirit inside that we are saved. We belong to the Lord. And in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 to 14, it says, And whom also ye trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, whom also that after ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance and the redemption of the purchased possession and the praise of of his glory. We have the Holy Spirit of God with inside us. When we got saved, God gave us the Holy Spirit as his down payment that he's going to re, uh, send Jesus Christ back to redeem us. And he's like earnest money. When you go out and buy a house, they expect you to give some earnest money down on a, a payment, amen, for the house. And uh, if you uh, decide not to buy the house because uh, uh, you didn't live up to the conditions that you set, you lose your money. But if you put some stipulations down, and, and they, they don't meet the stipulations. You can back out, but if you if you uh, if they meet all the stipulations you have down, and you still decide not want to buy that, you lose your your down payment. I'm gonna tell you what God gave us a down payment, the Holy Spirit of God, that His Son is coming back to redeem us. And I'm gonna tell you something: God's not gonna lose His Holy Spirit. God 
God's not going to back out on the deal that he made with us. And I'm going to tell you what, he's going to follow through. He's always followed through. The Bible says he never tells a lie. He's immutable. He never changes. And so therefore, you can take what he tells you to the bank. And uh, so he is our down payment because we are the purchased possession of the Lord Jesus Christ. He paid for our sin. He bought us, bought us with a price, the price of his blood. So we are a purchased possession of the Son of God. And we're going to be redeemed one day. And God gave us his Holy Spirit as a down payment, as proof that he's gonna send his son back to redeem us. I know I am saved because my life is evidencing good fruit. In Matthew chapter seven, verse 17 through 18, even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Uh, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Good to have brother John, Pastor, Pastor John R. Dingman with us today also, praise the Lord. Howdy preacher, how you doing? And, uh, but anyways, we have the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, gentleness, uh, faith, meekness, and temperance. And they build one on the other. You can't have, you gotta have love first, love, and then joy, and then peace. You can't have peace without having the joy or the love. Uh, you gotta have the one before it and it's like a step and they build one on top of the other. And so we ought to be evidencing the fruit of the spirit in our life, amen, when you're saved. And the last thing here is I know that I'm saved because I hear the Lord's voice through the word of God and desire to follow him. In John chapter number 10, verse 27 through 30, the Bible says here, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My father, which gave them me is greater than all. No man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I am a father are one. I've heard people say, well, yeah, I can pluck myself out, out of his hands. No, you can't because you got, you're telling me you're, you're stronger than God. Uh, the Bible tells me, is, as I stop and think, uh, if I had a, um, let me see what I got here. Let's say this is, this is me right here. This thumb drive represents my life. I'm in the hand of Christ. That's what he says. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And my father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man has ever plucked them out of my father's hand. I am doubly secured in the hand of God. I'm in the hand of God the Father and God the Son. And uh, my sin will never pluck me out of God's hand. Uh, there's people that believe they can lose their salvation. They can take themselves out of God's hand. And they put Jesus Christ in open shame. It's pathetic what people think in the charismatic movement, apostolic movement, where they can lose their salvation, gain it and lose it and gain it and lose it. They put the Son of God to open, uh, open shame. I'll go back to Hebrews chapter 6, 4 through 6 and read that and heed that. They find out that's impossible. Uh, to even do. If Jesus Christ lost you, you're dead and on your way to hell because he died for your sin. The Bible says he died for our sin once and that's it. It's not going to happen a second, third, fourth time. How many times you can think you can save and lose and all that kind of garbage. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, you're saved. It's called eternal security. When you put your faith and trust in Christ, it gives you eternal life, not temporary life, and you're saved now and forever uh, because it's kept by the power of God, not by the power of man. And if you love the Lord Jesus Christ and he is your personal Savior and Lord, then how in the world can you and I take his name in vain? That's pretty pathetic. We take the name of the Lord God in vain. Not only do they, people cuss using his name, but also taking his name and doing nothing with it and sharing that with somebody else. That's also taking his name in vain. We have a lot. We have 95% of God's people never go out and tell anybody about the Lord Jesus Christ. How sad is that? That speaks to our shame. Our churches would be packed plumb full if God's people get out there and do their job and quit being stinking spiritual lazy, amen, and laying around not doing nothing uh, with the salvation they got. They ought to share that with somebody else, tell their friends, their family, their loved ones about the Lord Jesus Christ so that they can be saved also. Because one day you're going to stand before God and God's going to look at your hands. You're going to have the blood of man upon your hands where you never told somebody else about the Lord Jesus Christ. God will hold you accountable for that. So I'm going to tell you something. Don't take the name of the Lord God in vain. Amen. God's given you many reasons here how to know that you're saved. And so you ought to stop and think about that. We'll go back through them real quick. I know that I'm saved. How? It's because I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I have the Son. I have love for the brethren. I keep God's commandments. Uh, I have a desire to turn from the world and all of its sin. I am overcoming the world. I have the witness of the Spirit within me. Uh, my life evidence the good fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, and I know that I'm saved because I hear the Lord's voice from the Word of God, and I desire to follow Him. 
So uh, that's how you know you're saved. And praise God. God wants you to know you have assurance. It ought to give you a sure footing. It ought to give us confidence in our salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ, in our faith that we have in God, that we can please him through our faith. Let's pray. Our dear Father, we thank you, Lord, today. And Father, we do give you praise on the glory. Thank you for the lesson and assurance that we can be, know that we're saved and we're always saved. We are eternally secured in the hand of God. Help us to serve and found faith in your eyes. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a super day and keep smiling because our God sure loves you. Bye-bye.